And the money we've given to Chinese companies has literally been what they've used to fund their rise and their Belt and Road Initiative. It's also provided for the Chinese Communist Party with that money and our technology to develop 5G and to repress their people. The answer has always been to cut off their access to our money. It's what we did against the Soviet Union and defeating the evil empire, and it can work against the CCP. After all, why should we invest in potential frauds without transparent accounting? There's no way to tell what they are. All we ask is that they follow the same rules as our companies, but they haven't, and that's given them a truly unfair advantage. But this show is about good news, and we have amazing progress. Recently, the U.S. Senate, in a unanimous 100-0 vote, voted to remove Chinese companies from our stock exchanges unless they comply with our accounting rules. The NASDAQ has already delisted Luckin Coffee for fraud. So I've asked Steve Bannon to come into the Economic War Room to explain just how significant this development is. As you likely know, Steve Bannon was President Trump's chief strategist, but he's also a former Goldman Sachs investment banker, a Hollywood producer, and former chairman of Breitbart News. He now hosts War Room Pandemic, a daily show on America's Voice. Steve, you've been pushing the phrase, victory begets victory. Tell us about the Committee on the Present Danger and some of the victories we've seen lately, particularly related to the financial markets. Look, in any conflict, and this is a conflict, remember the Chinese Communist Party, if you look at the book Unrestricted Warfare, which I know you're an expert on, given economic war, you have both information war, economic war, and kinetic war. They're in a hot information, cyber, and economic war with the West, particularly the United States right now. We need some wins. And I keep telling people, every time you look at military history, you got to start winning. Victory begets victory. And Kevin, because I think of the work of the Committee on President Danger, and quite frankly, shows like yours that have been out there and really going into detail, letting the American people know what's going on in the economic war room, we're starting to have wins. It's 100 to zero vote. We've had 200 to zero votes in the last couple of months, one in the Senate back in December to talk about Hong Kong. And then we just had this 100 to zero vote to talk about delisting and deregistering companies on stock exchanges in the United States. People are now waking up to the fact that the Chinese Communist Party has been in economic war with the United States for about 10 years. And I got to tell you, we're going to win this, but how we're going to win it is get some small, tough victories first and let that lead, get people get their confidence that we can take this on and defeat this, this uh, really evil dictatorship. Yeah, well, we heard about John Solomon. He wrote an article that talked about a 2013 memo that was written by uh, the administration with Joe Biden's, I guess, pushing it. Uh, and, and that got us into this mess. That put all these Chinese companies on our stock markets, not conforming to our accounting standards, not following any of our rules. Uh, but we had a change. And you know the president. You worked with the president. How is he going to react to all this? What's he doing? You know, President Trump has tried to be a statesman. He's tried to integrate China into the world global economic system. That was the Lighthizer Trump deal that he really forced him into that the Chinese walked away from in the spring of 2018. That deal would have, or excuse me, spring of 2019, that deal would have totally integrated the Chinese economic system. It stopped the slave labor over there. It stopped them from stealing IP and from really exporting deflation through their state-owned industries. It was a deal for the ages. The Chinese, you know, President Trump and, and Ambassador Lighthizer, the U.S. Trade Representative, took 18 months to negotiate that. The Chinese walked away when it came down to really focusing on signing. And so, and I think that proved the President Trump they're not to be trusted. The important thing of Hong Kong, is that this is the most important deal the Chinese Communist Party ever ever signed. Because it's not about trade, it's not about assets, it's not about money, it's not about finances. This is about seven million human beings. The, the Hong Kong Chinese and the expatriates were there were all British passport holders. And we basically agreed to allow them to be overseen and be managed, this country, for 50 years under two systems. But they would have complete total democratic, democratic freedoms freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. The Chinese, the Chinese Communist Party has ripped that deal up in the last 48 hours. And they're saying, hey, we don't care about money. We don't care about assets. We don't care about anything. What we care about is that we cannot allow 
the people in mainland China to see successful Chinese in Hong Kong having liberty and freedom and really prosperity. We're not, we're going to just shut this down. We're going to take control of it and put it under our dictatorship. 